Hello and welcome everybody to Crypto Rosetta. My name is Savage and today we're going to be looking at Ethereum. We're still looking for further evidence that we are looking for this bigger third wave, potentially up towards this uh, 2465 area. We still haven't, um, you know, looked to confirm this. So we need to be careful within this area because there are other interpretations. However, for as long as we continue to maintain this zone of the 1763, I will be looking for that possibility of, you know, seeing this continuation to the upside where we are getting a series of ones and twos here and actually looking to have this move push up um, higher here. As long as we hold this zone, you know, potentially we can still look for this bigger third wave here, which is looking for this 2141, which would then, um, you know, link into the idea of hitting this series of additional one uh, ones and twos, the third wave targets here. So this is what we're looking for in the bigger picture here. Obviously, we, we're going to discuss the more bearish count as well. Um, but what I'm looking for here is the potential that, you know, we could have either had this as a 1-2 here, and then we're looking for that possibility of another 1-2, or alternatively, you know, this could be come an A, a B, and then a C, where we still actually have to come down a little bit lower here and potentially look to target out this 1-1 one to one of this 1836. If, however, we take this low point here of this 1824, basically what I'll be looking for is to see whether the 1799 holds. If we manage to hold this zone, then, you know, this would still keep this count alive, where this would be one, potentially a two here, and then we'd just be looking for this third wave, uh, the second wave to move over here. I wouldn't want it to get too much bigger, though, because otherwise it starts to become a bit too disproportionate with this structure. Okay, so looking at this internal now, uh, basically we were talking about two things. I'm just going to come down into the hourly. We're talking about the possibility of looking for that fourth wave here, but uh, we lost this 50% area, this 1891. So, you know, like we always say, as soon as you start to lose 50% here, it starts to become less likely. So the alternative count that we were looking at within uh, yesterday's video is looking at this rather as a one, two, three, four, and then a five to the upside into this high here. So it's not, ex this is not my, it's not my preferred um, interpretation of it though. It's not very clean, but you know, it is it is viable. We can count this in this way. We do have five wave structures here. There's no overlap between this wave four and this wave one. So it is a viable count, but uh, yeah, I mean, I would have preferred to see an additional fourth and a fifth. And because of that fact, I'm just being a little bit cautious with this move. Um, you know, it is possible that this could just be a three wave move up. And if we take this low, this uh, 1826 low, it would pretty much confirm that at that point. So basically what we need to do if we want to look for bullish continuation here is I'd be looking at this move in isolation here as an ABC for a W. This is an X and then potentially that we could have actually completed here um, as a Y wave. What we need to be careful of here is that there could be some extension going on here and we could actually have, um, you know, a five wave structure developing. This is also possible, you know, if we're looking at that fact that um, from further back here, this is an A, a B, and you know that C, a C wave or a Y wave. It uh, could be a three wave move down. What we could get is something like this, where this becomes W. We get a move up for X again, and then we actually look to break down and take this low. So we need to see this start to progress to the upside in a more impulsive manner. If we want to say that this move is completed here, um, you know, it is always possible that we could also have, instead of this last wave here being a Y wave, we could have something like this where we have um, basically the structure here as a one, two, three, four, and then a five. For as long as we don't cross above this 1881, we need to just be open to the idea we could see some further extension here. Um, and what we would then be looking for, given the current target area, we'd be looking for that possibility to come down towards this 1847 to this uh, 1838, but we wouldn't, the problem with this is we don't really want to come too much lower than the 786 here. Once we start to come to uh, lower than this uh, 1849, you know, it starts to create problems within this idea of this move continuing to the upside. So if we fail to hold this zone, we need to then watch this 20, this 1826. If we fail to hold that, then it could be going to that lower support range. Okay, so basically what I'm looking for here is a turnaround. We don't have a lot of structure to work with here. And I mean, even on the smaller time frames, it is looking, it is looking quite corrective at the moment. It is possible, you know, this could be building into something here, where we have uh, uh, possibly a diagonal here as a one, come back down for a two, 
but we wouldn't really want to lose this low here, uh, this low region of this 1857. Losing this 1857 would make it less likely that we're starting a move to the upside like this. But basically what we'd want to see is, you know, a three wave move down here, something like this, potentially. This becomes A, B, and C, you know, possibly coming down towards this 1861 area, retesting these lows, and then looking for that possibility to move to the upside. If it is going to develop into an, imp an impulse, what I'd be looking for off of that zone would be moving up towards this 1898. So getting back above some of these highs here. And then we could start to see, you know, a bullish structure here where we look at this possibly one, two, bigger third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave. And then that would basically become, you know, the potentially, potentially become that wave one of this wave three. So we need to see this start to break to the upside here. If this is an impulse, you know, potentially, uh, we did come down to 50 percent here so it could actually be that this is one two already in which case we would could look to push directly up here but uh if we just have a, th a three wave move like this a b c up into this 18 18 uh, 87 region you know basically that would uh that would cause me to be concerned a little bit because this could just be a connector wave and then we actually look to continue to break to the downside here so this is going to be key if this is a a, B, or 1, 2. Third wave target would be this 1902. And then we'd want to see a fourth wave and a fifth wave to the upside for confirmation. So it's really too early to say with this, but basically what we need to see is whether we actually maintain the support zone here. If this is a low at this 1852, what I'd want to see, I wouldn't really want to see it drop back down below this 1857. Dropping below that would then probably mean that we either have just a single more, a single drop more here where we look for, uh, like I said, you know, that, that possibility of that fifth target lower down um, towards this zone here of this 1847 to this 1838. If we fail to hold that zone, then basically I would be anticipating that possibility of, uh, you know, coming back down into this lower range here of the support box, possibly towards this 1829 to the 1799 region. And once, like I said, once we start to lose 1799, we need to be cautious. And now one of the things we were talking about previously is that potential that we could have a bigger flat correction playing out here. So this is still viable. Um, and I'm still on the lookout for this where we could actually start to see a bigger move down here. Let me go back onto the hourly. Looking for a bigger move down towards some of these lower target ranges here of this uh, sort of 1775 to this 18. Uh, so 1682 region where this could be starting to um, play out as as an impulse to the downside the only way it would work though is if we look at this as potentially a one and a two where this is a flat correction a b c the problem is it has come quite high so you know there's there's um there's aspects to both of these counts that aren't great and we just need to see whether we can actually manage to get back above the seven this 1930 seven region if we fail to actually break back above that you know potentially we could be setting up for a bigger drop to the downside here and looking for some of these targets so what would this look like as a five-way structure so that would be looking at this as something like this so we can either we can either potentially count it into here where this is one two three four and five where we have overlap um this is this is the problem so actually it makes more sense to count it into here if this is the case the problem is it is very choppy, so it's not an ideal looking uh, structure for to call it the impulse. It is possible you could just subdivide this W, X, and Y, and then it's done, completed. You know, there's nothing left to say about it. Um, but basically, what I want to see here is structure-wise, if we start to form impulsive moves to the downside. So that would be looking for this lower target of the 1750. If we do move down to that 1750, Potentially what this could mean is we have, you know, the possibility of forming a five-way move down here. Uh, and what we could see is something like this playing out where this is actually one, two, one, two, one, two. And then actually now we're starting to, you know, complete that bigger third wave. So this is going to be a key zone here. Um, if we do actually face rejection in this 18, this 1874 region, which is a 50% of this is a wave three. What we could then see is an additional push to the downside here where we have um, basically, you know, five wave move that breaks down into the zone of this 1847. Once we, if we do break down into this zone, 
in an additional fifth wave, we'd have to be careful because we could also just say A, B, C, and that could be completed. But the key thing would then be getting back above this high, getting back above 1922. Until we actually do that, we'd have to still be cautious around this previous fourth wave area that we could see some extension here where we get another fourth and a fifth and another fourth and a fifth. So that would be within this count. This would be looking for extension within the waves. Um, you know, there are potentially other ways of counting this. Like I said, we could count it completely corrective, double U, X, Y, and it's done. And then we move up above here. So the key thing is going to be getting back above these highs if we're looking for completion. If we do break down in this manner, that five wave move could potentially look to drop us down towards this um, 1825 range to that 1813 range. And, uh, you know, this, this would then potentially bring us into that, uh, into that flat area. Um, of this of this lower zone here, this 1836, which would be a one to one, uh, sorry, which would be a 0 0.618 of that um, of that A wave. But really, it would make more sense if it came down towards more more towards this one to one or toward and uh, between this one to one at the 1775 to the 1682. So yeah, I mean, what I would be looking out for here is if we do form five wave structure like this, either we get, you know, further extension here and possibly, you know, instead of hitting, instead of this only hitting the, um, instead of this only hitting 1.618, it starts to push down deeper towards that 2.618 of this move. And we actually look to extend down and then get towards the zone of the 1750, in which case, you know, from further back here, have a bigger structure, one, two, three, four, and five into this lower range. But we haven't lost that support yet. So this is just looking for the potential of the breakdown. If we continue to reject down here, we get additional fourth and a fifth, additional fourth and a fifth, one more fourth and a fifth. That could actually look to bring us down into that one-to-one -one region. So if we're looking at this as a corrective move as A, B, and C, that 1819 target could be achieved with this just as a five wave structure here, you know, coming back into this zone. And then we could still be looking at this just as a completed move. We'd have basically a five wave structure here, one, two, and then we'd be looking for that third wave um, to push to the upside. So we're gonna have to see if we can continue to maintain these uh, key support levels. If we do, yeah, potentially this is um, one of the options. So the, the other one that I'm keeping an eye on is the possibility of a diagonal here. And really until we actually break this low of this uh, 1824, you know, we can still look at this potentially as a diagonal from further back here where this becomes one, two, three, four. And basically we're looking to form um, this ABC up here for the fifth wave. So the key thing within this is one thing that we need to just bear in mind is if we are treating this as a three wave move up here, technically speaking, this fifth wave could have completed already. And if this is the case, basically this would mean that this whole move to the downside that we're getting now is the beginning of a structure to the downside. So either a bigger ABC or alternatively a one, two, three, four, five to the downside, something like that. In which case, if we're looking at this move from the bottom here, as this being a one, this being a two, what we could then have is that this becomes a um, another wave one here as a diagonal. We get a wave two, and then we look to push to the upside. Alternatively, you know, this whole move here could just be a three wave structure, A, B, and C. We did talk about the possibility of a fifth, fourth wave here, and this is all a fifth wave. It is pos I mean, technically speaking, it's possible, but it's really disproportionate. So I don't like that idea. Um, it would make more sense to me that if this is going to be something like this is a diagonal, basically, you know, we could have this is one, two, and then we look to push up again, and then we'd look to um, possibly change that uh, change that count. Uh, the target would remain the same though if we're looking at the um, at this. At this is a one two, which would still be up here towards this two thousand four hundred and sixty five. Um, the thing is with this as a diagonal, basically what we'd be looking for is you know to find support above the sixteen eleven range. Failing to do so, we'd be looking once again. You know these are the same support zones. This um eighteen the sixteen fifty to this uh fourteen eighty two, basically this lower range here. Looking for that support to come in, and uh and then 
look for that push to the upside. But really, if we start to lose this 13 at 69, the bullish count starts to really um, falter out here. And we need to just be careful because basically what we're looking for is, you know, this potential here that we are forming. Uh, either this is a 1, 2, and then looking for, you know, a C wave to the upside, which the 1 to 1 is up here towards this 22 uh, 2218 region or alternatively you know we do have this 786 which is right towards this area of this two thousand dollar range so this is going to be a key area in my opinion if we do come up to up to it it's a big psychological zone as well um but basically if we do have this as just a corrective structure to the upside this could mean that we actually have that potential to break down and uh you know find lower lows if we do lose this low here sort of our last form of defense would be coming down would be finding support in this area of this uh, 1369 to this 1192 but losing that uh yeah then basically you know th this move starts to fall apart and uh we'd have to be talking about the idea that you know we just have a corrective move up here and we're looking for those lower targets which we've discussed in the previous videos which could be you know potentially if you want to look at it as a five wave down towards a seven two three to this five two three and if it's just an abc pattern from the top basically uh four hundred dollars could be um that low point that we look for so you know obviously there's a lot of things that need to happen in between this um but yeah that the, they still are possibilities and until they're invalidated you know we just need to keep an eye on them however you know like i also said that we could potentially count this as a five wave move here so we could still be looking for this possibility of an ABC pattern to the upside. One to one would actually bring us up towards this 1967, but I'd be particularly interested towards this 0 0.618 region, which would be this 1990, and this uh, these two price targets here between this 2013 to this 1995 range. So what we need to be looking out for is if we do form a five-wave structure here to the upside, we need to watch this top trend line here, Potentially, we could come and look to, uh, you know, retest this zone. And if we do get a harsh rejection for, for this and we come back and we take these lows out, basically, you know, we'd have to be careful that, that this is exactly what's playing out here because the um, the bullish counts are still pretty much, well, they are viable. It's just we need to see this move starting to take out. And if we start to take out this 1826 range, you know, it becomes this that would invalidate this one where we're looking to directly extend to the upside here then if we come back down and we actually take out you know this next low here at um this 1762 this would invalidate that possibility of extension from here and yeah i mean by the time by the time we do that it starts to really fall apart and it would make much more sense that this is just a corrective structure and we're looking for something like that flat correction to to take place and look to push back down deeper into these zones here of this uh, 13, 1739 to this 1682 area. If, however, you know, this this um, this develops as a flat and it becomes a, a, an extension within that fifth wave, sorry, within that C wave, you know, potentially we could look for moves as deep down as this uh, 1540, which would actually bring us back into that support zone lower down here. You know, so this is something I'll be keeping an eye on. Obviously, we do have some some big levels to get back through to go to the downside here. We've got these, um, you know, seventeen hundred area. Uh, we've got a little support on here, and then obviously we've got support on, on the lower range of this of this fifteen five sixty as well. So I'll be keeping an eye on these particular zones if we do start to break down in a bigger way. Could be that we set up for a flat, which then gives us, you know, that power to have that drive to the upside for that um, third wave. But we always need to be aware of that bearish scenario. And um, yeah, if we, like I said, if we start to form that that uh, five wave structure to the downside that we went over in the flat correction, something like this, we'd need to just be careful. Um, just be careful that you know we don't complete this move get a three wave move back up here face rejection again and then look to break down in a bigger way if that had to turn into a bigger five wave move to the downside you know we need to just uh, be aware that if this becomes one two we get a bigger third wave down here fourth it's going to be coming really deep into these zones and uh you know it's going to possibly look to take them and make this count the bullish count uh, very hard to 
to um, sort of defend at that point. Okay, so I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please smash the like button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn on those bell notifications so you never miss a video. Leave us some feedback down below. Also in the description, you'll find a link to Discord. Come check it out. It's free to join. As well as that, you'll find affiliate links for both Prime PT and Bybit down there. Both great exchanges we use on a regular basis. If you don't have an account, using the affiliate link does help support the channel. We do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.